Welcome back guys. So we are continuing to work on our solar system and over the next couple of days the plan is to get everything wired up and running. Yeah, so we just set up our wire reels. We got the wire pulled off, stripped it out, made the head up, tied to the rope. So we're getting ready to start pulling everything in. Um, to answer a few questions real quick, I know people are saying you can't put our panels so far away from where our inverter is going to be at. It's not necessarily true. If I was going to wire all these panels to be 48 volts, I'd have to massively increase that wire to get that all the way down there. Mm -hmm. But we have these things wired in series and parallel. So the voltage from the panels going to the inverter is actually 288 volts. So at that voltage, we have about a 2% voltage drop at 400 feet. Mm -hmm. So we're below our 3% margin, so we have no issues at all with uh, voltage getting there without any voltage drop at all. So we're good to go. Yes. Um, we also had a couple of questions, and I apologize for not having gotten back to the comments on the previous video in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. I've had a, kind of a crazy week. I'm trying to gear up for our homeschool year to start, which involves a lot of planning and preparation for me. Hopefully I've gotten back to you guys by the time you're watching this video, but there were a couple of questions um, on there that we've addressed previously. We do you know, get new subscribers sometimes, and not everybody sees every video, mm -hmm. so we don't mind addressing those again. Uh, one of those questions was, are we planning on expanding the solar system or our battery bank? Yeah, so you see we have the four battery modules down low. There's enough room for the uh, for four more batteries up top. So right now we're at uh, about 21 kW, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when we put four more, we'll be around 42 kW. So that's plenty enough power for us. It's covering everything that we need right now, but we do plan on expanding um, our battery bank in the near future. Yeah, and a few more panels, but we're fine. Yep, so um, another question we had is where we got those batteries from. Uh, eBay. Yes, a reputable seller off of eBay, um, and we expect a good lifespan out of those batteries. However, you know we'll keep you guys updated on if there's anything we would have done different once we have the system up and running and have used it for a while, if we would have changed anything, mm -hmm. um, and you know how it lasts over time. Another question, oh, keeping with that, was where we got the um, the system from in, in general, like the inverter and those components, and that all came from Alt E Store. We're not affiliated with them, but um, you know, just so you guys know, and since you're asking, that's where that came from. And they're helpful too. They they're very very helpful. Yeah, they, the thing, they were so. easy to work with. So yeah. we a good experience. Right, so what are we doing now? All right, so she's climbing the ladder. The yeah. cat's climbing the ladder. She's on top of the eight foot ladder. So next task we're gonna do, we go ahead tie the rope to the front of the buggy, um, and go reverse and yank that bad boy in. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. All right, uh, she's stuck. Come here, kitty. Come here. Come here. Come here. So we rigged a few things up. I pulled a 90 out of the ground and I took a uh, two by six and leaned it against it and drove a uh, piece of rebar straight down so that 90 won't curl over with a lot of pressure. It's gonna hit that two by six and hold it in place. Um, so I got the rope pulled through, tied to the bumper of our buggy. And uh, I got my main man Carter right here. He is a trained professional buggy driver. And he's <laughs> gonna operate this thing while I hold him to the rope and we're gonna start pulling. All right, let's see how this works out. All right, start her up. Take it slow, put it in low gear. Mm -hmm. start. And we're gonna go slow. Just put, keep it in low gear, give it some gas, go. Go ahead, son, go ahead. Slow, 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 slow. Okay. Good. We yanked that wire with the buggy, went very, very smooth. We put a uh, two by six kicker against that 90, so when the pressure came on there, it wouldn't actually snap that pipe from uh, pulling with the buggy. Uh, so that's done, so the next task is, we go ahead and take this 90 off, go ahead and stub this thing up to the bottom of a disconnect.
Our disconnect's installed. It's a three pole, 30 amp, 600 volt, non fuse safety switch, NEMA 3R. So, since it's NEMA 3R, this thing's rated for outdoor use. Um, rain coming down this thing will be no issue at all. These wires right here come from our solar panels. We'll come up and tie into the line side right here of the disconnect. And then off the load side, these lugs right here will come in and go to the charge controller. The way it's sitting right now with this arm in the down position, it is opened up so it's making no contact so the thing will be turned off. To energize it, arm goes up, closes, and then it comes off and goes into the charge controller. Now that this thing's installed, we're going to go ahead and go inside and finish the pipe and get the wire pulled through and then start wiring everything up. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and install this LB. It's a little conduit. The wire's going to come through, this cover comes off, and we'll feed the wire down to go into the charge controller. Right now, I've got my connector right there. I'm going to go ahead and, there's a threaded on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and push it on and uh, spin around. Yeah, there you go. Our conduit's up and installed. Cover will come off. We'll push the wire through the conduit. We'll come into the charge controller and uh, the cover will go back on. I'm not a big fan of the way I had to install it like this, coming down at an angle and come in. We typically like to do everything parallel and perpendicular. This case, but it's all laid out, coming through the disconnect. It wasn't that easy. Um, prefer to come down, come around, come to the bottom. But the bottom of this charge controller is made for ventilation only. It's not made for anything to go into the bottom like that. So I had to come to the side and it's what it is, so it's fine. So we're gonna come back through and we'll seal around this right here. We, we hole saw through, it's a little bit messy now, but we'll come back and fix that. Not a big deal. Um, so let's start getting everything wired up. We're gonna go ahead and put our bomb bushing on. We're putting a bomb bushing on right here because we have an eccentric knockout. If you look closely, since there's over 250 volts coming through here, and I still have this portion still left in there, I need to, by code, install a bomb bushing. So this bomb bushing will screw onto this top connector right here, and we're gonna take our wire and wrap it around and bond to this right here, and we'll come back off and tie into this uh, mechanical lug. So I'm going to go ahead and do some of these lugs real quick. So I get my wire inside. Right, so I'm going to start with my positive, I'm sorry, my negative wire. Eyeballing if it's good or not, and that should be good. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Do a light score and strip.
put my no locks on. This stuff, you use this for aluminum cables only, not copper. The downside with aluminum is aluminum oxidizes over time. So that's why you put this stuff on so it does not oxidize. The plus side, the positive thing with aluminum, it's a lot cheaper. This is my positive, that you some marker red tape. I'm gonna make sure it's good. Go ahead and strip this guy too. We have a positive negative tied into the line side of the disconnect. The reds are positive, negatives are black. We have a ground coming through. We have a bomb bushing on this because we have an eccentric knockout. Code stays with over 250 volts. If you have eccentric knockouts, you gotta bond the pipe also. We had 288 volts, so we went and do a bomb bushing on there. Bond the pipe, came through. We hit a two barrel mechanical lug. We grinded the paint off so it's uh, metal on metal, not, not this metal on paint. So that's good to go. So the line side of this disconnect is wired up and done. So the next step for us to do is we're gonna go ahead and take a positive right here, comes off, goes into the pipe, a, a negative comes off, goes in, and we have to hit our ground also again. And then once we wire this thing up, it's done. I'm going to push the low side of this into the charge controller. We're gonna start with the negative lead. We'll push that through, get it wired in here first, get it out of the way, and we'll start the positive. The disconnect's wired up and done. We got the line side coming in. Low side goes out to the charge controller. If you guys notice, we use aluminum on the top and copper down low. We pulled the aluminum because it's such a far distance, 400 some feet. With the copper wire, it'd be more expensive. So it comes in, wires up. We just change over the copper that goes into the charge controller. It actually shrunk the wire down just a little bit. So it's just a little bit easier to work with. So this portion is done. Ready to shut her down, close her up. So now let's go inside and wire up the charge controller. This is a lightning arrestor. We're going to go ahead and put this in. It's going to tie in to the uh, charge controller. Um, this is, it can uh, withstand up to a 60,000 volt surge. So we're going to put this in.
So we have our positive lead on our PV positive terminal. We have our negative lead right here comes from our panels to our PV negative terminal. And these small 12 wires are for the uh, lightning arrestor. This terminal block here is for the battery. So we have a positive negative side right here. This portion will charge the batteries. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. You saw us yank the wire in with the buggy, install the disconnect, wire up the disconnect, and also start wiring the uh, charge controller. Um, how's that brain of yours feeling? Brain dead. Brain dead. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I am. Um, it was a challenge trying to like film all of his everything that he was doing, get him to slow down long enough, and I was completely in his little bubble trying to get the camera in there mm -hmm. and he had to work around me so hopefully we got some good shots it wasn't too choppy um, and you guys got a somewhat in-depth look at what he was doing and you know you slowed down to explain a little bit yep what was going on we had some requests for that so hopefully it worked out and um, hopefully get, we get the next video out tomorrow which is going to uh, be the same fine. way because I know this video is longer I think than our normal videos once we I should have them. everything wired up by tomorrow and done for the entire video I think yeah right yeah and then we'll, I guess, uh, see how it functions, see how it all works. Yeah, so let us know if you guys enjoyed this. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow, I guess, right? Yep. All right, yep. see ya. See ya. All right, so, There's a big bee right there. That's it. So we yanked that wire in. If we didn't have a problem, we... <laughs> I'm allergic to bees. We're like an hour from the hospital, yep. you know what I mean? But like, don't get... worry, Josh. Josh will, will knock a hive over right in front of me. Yeah, you know? Man. No the thing problem. thing about it is, it's hard to tell you get some beads. You can't, <laughs> you can't swell up any more than you already have. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got that wire yanked in. Um, went in without a problem. Went very easily. Yeah, it went very smooth. I knew the buggy could handle it because it handles driving Josh around the farm. So we knew we could pull. <laughs> got the head pushed in there. So no problems. The ladder let it feed. I'm, I'm <laughs> rambling. Am I rambling or no? A little bit, but he does that sometimes. Basically, it went really well, and now we're on to the next step, which is... See, this is why I'm in charge here, because she doesn't get into the details. She thinks you turn a light switch on, the light bulb turns on, that's it. You know that time you... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We are not going there. Yes, no, we're not. No, we're not. Okay. We are not Maybe going next there. time. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I first met her, Long story. A few guys at work probably remember, remember okay. that story yeah. when I was dating you. Did, did you want dinner tonight? <laughs> I'm just wondering. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I, I forgot what we're talking about. So we yanked it in. Um, it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know. We're done. It's getting late. Tied to the front of the buggy. Put in reverse and uh, drove backwards. Always the sore bells. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the plan worked. Um, I knew it would. I've never done it that way, but uh, we got it in without a problem, right? Went with ease. It did. It did. So uh, the next step is we're about to disconnect, get everything uh, up to disconnect, wired up, get the combiner box piped in, and get that wired up. If you notice, we didn't pipe that side in yet because we had nobody feeding on that side, so we let that pipe hang down the ground, got the wire through there, <laughs> and it pretty much fed itself. <laughs> kind of like you. I'm at, I'm at work. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> We've tried to do this like 10 times now. I just can't anymore. So, that's all, that's next, right? Sure. Is that good enough or no? Oh, next for me is going to be dinner. <laughs> I know, I can't wait. It's just not going to work out tonight. We'll try it tomorrow night. Okay. You know?